it is Wednesday, June 26th, and we're on our way down to play in event number 61 at the World Series of Poker, the Colossus $400 No Limit Hold'em Tournament. So, should be a another huge field like uh, the Big 50 was. The Big 50 event had over 28,000 uh, total players that uh, entered it. So uh, we didn't do that great in that, um, yours truly. I went out right at the, literally on the very last hand of level four. So uh, went out when I flopped a set of sevens, three of a kind, three sevens on the flop. Today, we'll see how it goes. Um, running a little bit late, a little bit later, uh, not really late, but later than I want to be. It's about 9.20 right now on our way down to the Rio. Um, the only thing, I'm not worried about making it to the tournament in time. I'm worried about getting down there and ha finding a shade spot. I don't want to park out in the main lot and have the car baking in the sun all day. But uh, yeah, we're going to come in with the same strategy. Um, maybe maybe I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive when um, I'm in good position. You know, when I'm late in hand, if it hasn't been raised, we're going to be raising it up a little bit more, hopefully. Um, but the first two levels, my game plan is to take it easy and go into observation mode. Just kind of watch what's going on at the table. Uh, be very selective of my spots. The first two levels, there's no need to get the whole stack at risk unless we're like a huge favorite. You know, four or five to one favorite. Um, maybe if we're in a very, very close spot like we were last time, we'll find a fold this time and try to uh, make it deeper into the tournament. We'll see how it goes. Um, you can't play too tight. You can't play too loose, aggressive. You've got to have a nice balance. You've got to really, really pay attention. I'm going to try to be more focused. I feel really good this morning. Uh, I was kind of tired and just, I don't know what it was last time. I felt like I stayed out all night, didn't sleep. Um, wasn't the case, but it's just how I felt last time. And I didn't have any good, uh, I had some little tiny energy shots, but they, they weren't working. I just felt really tired. I wasn't focused in that last tournament. I feel good this morning. I've had three cups of coffee. Maybe it's too much, but uh, I have a high tolerance for coffee, so I need three cups. We've got two 16-ounce rock stars in the old backpack, so I think we're good to go in terms of energy. I'm going to try to hold off on that until uh, we see if we make it to about maybe level five or six uh, before we crack the first rock star, depending on how I feel. If I start feeling run down and burn out, I'm going to crack one of those immediately, but then I want to save one. Uh, in case we get lucky and we may make it past the dinner break late into the evening, we'll have the second rock star. But that's looking way ahead forward, obviously. Um, it'll be a long day if we do well. Got one. Got a parking place. Just going to back in because I think the way the parking garage is facing, the sun's going to blast in through this window. Through the back, so I don't want to boss in my front of my dash. But um, got a spot. We're in the parking garage. We're in the shade. That's a good thing. All right, let's get in there.
What's up, guys? Super bright out here. Uh, we're on break. It's the end of, I think, level three. And um, doing all right. We got started with 40,000 in chips, and we got 62,000 right now. 62,000 in chips. So, doing okay. Just, uh, it's really tough to get away from uh, the crowd because there's a huge crush inside, of, like you saw there. So, the crowds are big. But, figured I'd come out here and get a little bit of sun. sun, sun but, Super bright, not too hot. Nice to get outside, but I'm gonna go inside right now, eat a quick power bar, and uh, get back in there. I think level four. Level four or level five, I don't know. We'll be coming back to you next, so try to keep it going. We're over here in the parking garage. Hope you guys can hear me because I got the AC on full blast. I just went to the bar and had a Corona. Why am I in the parking garage? Do you guys know why I'm in the parking garage? Can you guess? If you guessed, it's because we're out of the Colossus. You're wrong. We're not out yet. We're in the parking garage, but we're still in the tournament. It's 97 degrees. It's probably more than that inside the car. Yeah, we got all the way down. So we had a starting stack of 40,000. We're up, down, up, down. We had a couple of good spots. I had a couple of tough calls, like with pocket aces. Now, I know pocket aces is easy. It's not a tough call preflop. But um, the board double paired with a flush draw. Then the turn brought a straight draw, and I had a guy betting into me, betting fairly big. Um, I check called him on the turn. I check called him on the river because I don't want to blow up the pot, give him a chance to raise it. And um, we won that one. We took it down. I don't even remember what he had. He just mucked it. We had another hand where I looked down at Jack Queen of Clubs um, under the gun, which is first position under the big blind. Raised it up three times the big blind to three thousand. Uh, get a couple callers and um, the flop is good and bad the flop is 8 9 10 we've got Jack Queen you probably know why it's bad the flop is 8 9 10 of diamonds we got Jack Queen of clubs so what do you do what do you guys do there do you lead out um, you have a few options but if somebody flopped the flush you're screwed if somebody has a good or even a mediocre flush draw Whatever you bet, they're going to call or raise. If it's me, I'm raising because I like to raise my draws. Um, and since we're out of position, I have to act first. So I just decided to check it, see what he bets. And I'm going to obviously call pretty much whatever he bets. He's got less chips than me, so that's a good factor. Uh, right at that point, we have about um, 50,000 in chips. So we check the straight with the three diamonds on the board. He bets... Um, is that when he makes his move? 
yeah, he makes his move. He's sitting there for a few for a little while, and he says, I'm all in. So I said, can I get a count? How many chips does he have? He's got 29,000. We've got 50, so it's going to be a big portion of our stack. But in the event that he's just on a diamond draw and he just has the ace or king of diamonds, you know, we have the best hand. And if a diamond doesn't come, then um, we're going to make a huge upswing in our stack. I think about it for about 30, 45 seconds. Um, but ultimately, I know I have to call. Uh, but this is a solid player. He knows what he's doing um, from what I've seen. I make the call. And he goes, well, I guess you got it. And I said, well, I don't have the flush. And so he turns over 8-9 for the two pair. Um, and he's pretty disappointed. But all he needs is an 8 or a 9 to fill up, make a full house, and we're out. Um, no luck on the turn, no luck on the river for him. So we knock him out of the tournament. We have a huge upswing. So then a player is going to come in to replace him and take his seat. It's Joe Cata. It's like a freaking uh, World Series of Poker, man, Joe Cata. So if you don't know who he is, look him up on Google, Joe Cata, C-A-D-A. -A. So he's sitting there right across from me, um, diagonally across the table. So now we have, uh, we have a, a very, very seasoned, uh, very well-known professional at the table, which is fun and bad, both at the same time. So just have to be careful. Um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, so did I say how much I have? We were down to 50,000. We were up to 75,000. We were down to 60 again, almost down and then down to 50 again. And we had a couple of big hands. Um, that straight pushed us back up. Then we had another big hand. What the heck was it? We had fought the set. We had fought the set. And we had another double up. So we're, uh, we got up to uh, 140,000. We're, right, we're down a little bit right now just before the break because I flopped uh, two pair. But it was a crappy two pair. It was a deuce three and it was a deuce three king. And the guy raised pre-flop. Yada, yada, yada. We ended up losing that one. So we're at 130. So that's okay. The blinds are uh, 800 big blind, 400 small blind, and an $800 big blind ante. So essentially the big blind is putting in 1,600 uh, every time it's his big blind. So my voice is going. I have my backpack with some garbage in it that I'm going to eat right now and, and drink some water and re, uh, re replenish. Um, yeah, I had the Coors Light just to sort of decompress. Not a Coors Light. Corona. I had a Corona. I'll show you what we got. We got two uh, cracker tuna salads. Yeah, the people around me are gonna love me. Don't worry, I got mints too. So, all right, so we're in good shape. Um, we got Mr. Joe Cata at our table, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but we are, uh, you know, I'm the big stack at the table, so that's kind of good. There's uh, 4,500 people in the event, and every time I look up at the uh, monitor, the number of players, the number of entrants in the event just keeps going up and up and up and up because you can register all the way through the end of the night tonight and you can actually register again tomorrow for the uh, day two. I'm going to eat this food, guys. I'm going to eat this little dinner. Stay tuned here. We get back in there and I'll give you some more updates. Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. I'm down to sixty thousand. Lines are going to be twenty five hundred. Uh, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. I think with a one thousand small blind. So it's going to be about five thousand every time the blinds come around. Six thousand, including the small blind. So sixty thousand is not a big stack. Uh, lost half the stack that last level. And I was heads up on a big, a big pot, blind versus blind, and uh, I had a seven three of hearts, and a four five hearts flopped. Um, it was a four five eight. I don't know something like that. We had a, we had the flush draw, and we were uh, gut shot to the straight. I can't even think right now. We just finished level. Um, 13, I think. We have three more levels to play. Then we have uh, a 
break and then one level after that and then we're done for the night if we make it that far but we have to double up definitely have to double up in the next level or it's going to be bounce time must go time if we don't double up I am at about nine orbits, nine times around before I go completely broke. And the smaller your chip stack gets, the lower your fold equity gets, meaning the lower chance your stack is going to make other stacks fold so that you can pick up the chips that are in the middle when you need to. So I need to go quick. I need to go all in here pretty quick. Ace King offsuit. I shove all in on the big blind. Perfect. Pot's not raised, but there's already a few thousand in there from um, the annies that I have to post. And uh, actually, it was one other caller um, or one other raiser preflop. I don't know. But anyway, I shoved the ace king. It goes back to him. He thinks a little bit. He folds. I win that one. <clears throat> not much, though. Look, uh, go again. Very next hand. Queen jack offsuited. And comes around to me with one collar ahead I go all in it goes over to the big blind and he has a lot of chips he's thinking for a long while he eventually talks himself into a fold and uh, I heard him saying something about pocket fives or something but <clears throat> the other guy folded too so we pick up a small pot there um, just probably about four or five hands after that still right at 50,000 in chips we get look down and get pocket nines this time it was raised ahead of us by about 6,000 by a player that plays quite a lot of pots. Um, so we go all in again. And this time he shows us pocket aces. So we got he's got pocket aces, we got pocket nines. Here comes the flop. The first card over is an ace. Ace in the window, so he's flopped three aces. We're pretty much dead unless we hit a 9-9. Nine -nine, and we don't. We don't hit the 9-9, nine -nine, so we're out of there. Busted out. Busto. <laughs> it's 9.20 p.m., 93 degrees out. So we were in there for about 11 hours. 10 a.m. until 9.20 is what it is. But um, you got to be positive no matter what happens. Bad beats are going to happen. Suckouts are going to happen. It goes both ways. You're going to get lucky. You're going to get uh, blown off stuff. You're going to get unlucky. That's poker. You can't control the cards once they come out. Once you make your play, you can't control what happens. You do the best you can with what you're dealt. Same as in life, same as in poker. Um, that's what we sign up for, you know. Sometimes you play for 11 hours and you're going to walk away with zip, nothing. Uh, minus 400 for this one, so. But I definitely like playing tournaments more than the cash games. It's tough to get the cash results out of them. But the competition factor is um, is so much more fun. And the, um, the competitiveness, it's just, it's awesome. And... Uh, over here at the World Series, you got a chance once in a while to, to have uh, pros at your table. You know, like I said, uh, 2009 main event champion Joe Cato was at our table for uh, about an hour. He he ended up busting out. Um, I think he went all in with a... I can't remember. Might have been a flush draw that he missed. That's it, guys. I do appreciate everybody. Thanks for watching this video. Um, hopefully it's not going to be too long. I don't know. I did a lot of blabbing. Probably a long video again. I gotta figure out a way to edit these things down so they're shorter or talk less. But um, that's gonna do it. See when we get out there again next time. I don't know. It might be a tournament again. We'll see what happens. I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching, guys.